on this computer. Thank you. And now I make the. No. Okay. Okay. This. This one. I'm sharing this. Share options. Pos in a Okay. Now, uh, we uh, mentioned uh, before uh, uh, one or two probably workshops about the floor lights, and we will repeat it today because floor lights are connected with other fixtures and instruments that we um, we use and uh, we have to speak and mention about them about them uh, it is the coda uh, lights it is the strip lights and uh, uh, some more uh, so let's remind something about the floor lights we mentioned that floor lights, which are also called foot lights or up lights, if you want, are lighting devices that uh, are put at the floor level, usually along the front edge of the stage or in other key spots on the stage floor. From below, these lights are used to shine on actor set pieces and backgrounds, making certain visual effects and improving the lighting design as a whole. I remind you about what floor lights are and how they work. Floor lights can help light up the face of the actors from the unique angle from downstairs, and especially when used with other lighting angles. This can work especially well for adding excitement or drawing, drawing attention to certain facial uh, emotions. Now, of uh, this, <clears throat> then Alazi, Labrini. <laughs> Ne. Alex. 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 Okay, floor lights. Okay, now the uh, the floor lights can help reduce shadows cast by overhead lighting, ensuring more even illumination. This is particularly useful for filling in the shadows under the chin, under the nose and eyes, creating a more how can I say, a flattering look for the actors. Because floor lights cast lighting upwards, they can create dramatic effects by casting unusual shadows on the actors and the scenery of uh, the actor's face. This is often used in horror or uh, suspense scenes to create a sense of mystery, of unseas, or, 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 or tension. When uh, used with color gels, floor lights can add hues to the lighting, enhancing the mood and the atmosphere of the scene. Well, floor light can be used to highlight specific set pieces or areas on the stage, drawing the audience attention to important elements. Traditionally placed along the front edge of the stage, footlights illuminate actor and scenery from the front and below. Commonly used in classic theater production and musicals to create a soft, even wash of light across the, uh, the stage. 
Now, the uplights. These can be placed at various points on, on the stage floor and aimed upwards at actors, at set pieces or backdrops. Versatile for creating dramatic uplighting affair, emphasizing architectural features of sets or adding depth to the stage design. How floor light works. The lighting designer determines the placement of the, of the floor lights based on the desired effect and the overall lighting design. They are positioned to avoid direct glare into the audience eyes, of course. The angle at which floor lights are aimed is crucial. Signed adjustment can significantly alter the lighting effect, creating different shadows, patterns, and highlights. Also, color cells can be used to change the color of the light, enhancing the mood or matching the color scheme of the production. The intensity of floor lights is controlled through dimmers, allowing for smooth transition and adjustment during the, uh, the performance. Excuse me? Nikos, I'm here. Okay, okay, Sorry, okay, yes. But there, there, is, there is a little bit. Okay, uh, let me continue now. Uh, now, the... Well, you have to understand that I'm handle two computers right now in order you will have the right uh, screens and uh, I to see my notes. So the floor lights, uh, how we use the floor lights. Floor lights are used in uh, conjunction with overhead lights, front lights, field lights, back lights, and all we mentioned be uh, before to create a balanced and dynamic lighting design. During scene changes, floor lights can be adjusted to alter the focus, the mood, supporting the narrative and emotional shifts in the performance. I mention it because it many times before about the security and the danger. The floor lights are on the floor, very near to the movements, very near to the actors. That's, that's why staff must ensure fl uh, floor lights are securely placed and cables are safely managed to prevent tripping hazards for actors and the crew. Actors are dancing, playing, moving on there and they are not able to see the, where the cable is or where the uh, the projector, the, the, the floor light is. So we have to be uh, safe. Traditional incandescent floor lights can generate significant heat. This is a, a problem more. So care must be taken to avoid burns or fire hazards in case that these the floor lights are near to the fabrics, near to woods, near to uh, fire-friendly uh, materials. But, okay, lead floors lights are a safer and more energy efficient, uh, efficient, of course. Now, let's pass to the coda lights. Sorry. The coda lights. Coda lights, also known as a CYC. CYC is uh, three letters that may uh, that means cyclorama. So uh, coda lights, also known as sig lights or cyclorama lights, are specialized lighting instruments used in theater to illuminate large vertical surface such as backdrops or cyclorama or other uh, scenic backgrounds. They are designed to produce an even wash of light across 
this surface, enhancing the visual depth and the atmosphere of the stage production is very crucial. The purpose of the codalites, what is the purpose? Especially backdrop illumina illumination. Codal lights are used to provide a uniform wash of light across backdrops, ensuring there are no uh, dark spots or uneven lighting areas. They can create a colorful backgrounds by using color cells or LED technology. I have to separate these two uh, different uh, technologies, uh, the old one and the new technologies, which is particularly the LED technologies useful for setting the mood or scene. And also the cyclorama lighting. Large surfaces, as cyclorama are large, curved fabric surfaces at the back of the stage used to create the illusion of, let's say, the sky, or the clouds, or buildings, a city in the deep of the stage, or infinity space. Coda lights are ideal for lighting these large surfaces e evenly. Um, let's say some things about the cyclorama. It is something that uh, we have mentioned in detail in stage designing, but not to the light designing uh, workshop. What is a cyclorama? A cyclorama, often abbreviated, as I told you, like a sink, is a large curved backdrop used in theater and the stage production very often to create the illusion of seamless background or a sky or clouds or everything. It is typically positioned at the back of the stage and can cover a significant portion of the stage width and height. What is the purpose of the cyclorama? Why we need it in the theater? Because we want to create depth and infinity. The curved design and large design of the cyclorama. Uh, can you can you follow me now? Because I have uh, uh, I have a sign here that my internet is not stable. Is it okay yes. for you? Okay. Yes, we follow. Okay, I'm let's ignore that. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I uh, I said that the curved design and large side of cyclorama helps in creating an illusion of depth, making the states appear larger and giving the impression of an infinity horizon. The cyclorama can be used to project different colors and patterns through lighting, enable versatile moods and atmospheric changes. We can pretend there that we are to the seaset, to the sunset or uh, at night or in the morning and uh, things like that. That's why I'm speaking about the mood, about the atmosphere of the performance in a particular uh, moment. It can mimic, as I told you, skies, landscapes, abstract background, enhancing the visual storytelling. Sometimes between the coda light and the cyclorama, we put uh, some uh, cardons or uh, uh, what other, which pretend that it is a building here, just with the shadow, not with the detail of the house, for example, or a building or uh, somewhere. Or sometimes, an actor, two actors, three actors, or a dance happen behind the cyclorama and in front of coda lights, between the coda lights and the uh, cyclorama. So we have shadows of the cyclorama. Also, mm -hmm. the cyclorama uh, can also serve 
as a surface for, for proje projection, displaying images, videos, or animation that contribute to the scene settings. Uh, and in the, in, uh, I, uh, Labrini, uh, φαίνεται αυτή τη στιγμή το participant uh, τετραγωνάκι. Λαμπρινή σου μιλάω. Okay. Uh, uh, guys, please uh, tell me, is there this white thing in front of, uh, uh, of your uh, screen? No, it's, it's not no white thing. No, no it's, it's oh, okay. It's only the screen. It's okay. Now it's uh, the same. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go forward. Now, uh, how the... Mm, how the cyclorama works. How we construct it and how we insta install it on stage. Cyclorama's are usually made from seamless heavyweight fabric like muslin, canvas, or scream, which uh, can absorb and reflect light effectively. It is often constructed in a concave shape, wrapping around the back of the stage. Some modern cyclorimas are motorized and key adjusted in shape or size. It is typically mounted on a series of buttons and uh, rigging systems that uh, over the stage, uh, above the stage, that allows it to be raised, lowered, or pulled aside when not in use. Now about the lighting. Even uh, illumination, lighting, uh, Cyclorama requires careful placement of the lights to ensure even coverage without creating shadows or hotspots. This, this can be achieved using uh, float lights, strip lights, or cyclorama lights, which are designed to spread lights to the total of the surface. When we say cyclorama lights, we include all these kinds of lights, coda lights, uh, strip lights or flute lights. By using color gels or LED lights, the cyclorama can change the color smoothly. Modern light, uh, um, LED system can be uh, programmed to shift color dynamically, enhancing the visual effect. We have, we can have special effects with gobos, for, uh, for example. I have mentioned what gobos is. You remember to the profile uh, light projectors, we put in a hole inside the profile uh, a frame with uh, many different shapes. Can be uh, a tree, can be a window, can be um, many, many, many things. So I mean that on the cyclorama can put with these special lights, uh, gobos uh, and other lighting accessories and can create texture on pattern effect on the cyclorama. We can project them from front, uh, uh, front of the cyclorama and we have the front projection. Images or videos can be projected into the cyclorama from the front using projector placed in the auditorium if we have something very strong video projector or if we had a video projector which is ultra through, this is the name ultra through, what it means, it means that the distance from the video projector, uh, be careful, I'm speaking right now about the video projector, not the light projector, okay, not for the spotlight. So when the 
video projector is near to the backdrop or near to the cyclorama, we have ultra throw because the ultra throw needs a small, uh, a, a short distance from the cyclorama and give us a wide um, a screen, wide projection. This is ultra through. All the other projection projector that you probably know, probably we have in our in our house, is very uh, normal. Um, it is very simple. Well, uh, the video projector that we need and we use in the theater is very high lumen. Uh, projectors, video projectors, which have many other preferences in order to have good image and good projection on the cyclorama or, or uh, on a backdrop. Also, we can have a rear projection. In some cases, rear projection is used where the projector is placed behind the cyclorama casting images through the fabric. This method can help avoid shadows cast by actor or set pieces. Why I say I, I, I mentioned this? Because if we have the video projection, the video projector in front of the cyclorama, the audience is uh, somewhere here, the video projector is here, we have between the video projector and the cyclorama the actors to play. So many times we have shadows on the cyclorama. This is not good and we can avoid it if we put the video projection, ultra through or whatever, uh, behind the, uh, the cyclorama. In this case, we must have enough space behind uh, the backdrop or the uh, cyclorama. So, uh, practical uh, uses. Scene changes. Cyclorama enable quick and versatile scene changes, which is crucial in live theater where set changes need to be efficient. We have atmospheric enhancement by altering the color and intensity of the light uh, on the cyclorama, different times of the day, weather condition, or emotional tones can be suggested. For example, we can pretend that we have a tempest with thunders, with um, clouds, heavy clouds, and things like that on the uh, cyclorama, and we can add a uh, very interesting mood on the spectacle of the performance. In summary, a cyclorama is a fundamental element in theater stage design, providing a flexible and power tool for creating immersive and visually dynamic backgrounds. Its effective use of lighting and projections enhances the overall visual impact of the performance, of the production. Let's look at a video uh, which connect the cyclorama with the coda lights and the uh, uh, gobos. You see up there, here, there is the coda lights up there. This is from above the stage. Okay, ignore this music. It's annoying a little bit. What is happening? Uh, it's finished. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Now, uh, texture and uh, patterns. 
some other uh, scenic affair by using gobos and other accessories called the lights can project many patterns or textures into the cyclorama or backdrop, adding visual interest and enhancing the, the scenic design. Now, how could the light work? Let's speak a little bit about design and the structure. Coda lights typically have a broad rectangular shape in front and are designed to be mounted close to the cyclorama or the backdrop, as I told you, either from above or from below. They often contain multiple lamps within a single housing each with its own reflector and lens to ensure even light uh, distributions. Uh, mounting and uh, uh, spacing. Mounting at first. Coda lights are mounted on buttons above as you, you, you show in the video, above or positioned on the floor below the uh, cyclorama. They must be placed at an appropriate distance to ensure even coverage. Multiple coda lights are often used side by side, one after the other, to cover the entire width of the stage. Now, during technical rehearsal, coda lights are programmed into the lighting control board with specific cues that match the scenes in the performance. For production required dynamic color changes, we have, of course, the LEDA code lights can be programmed to shift colors seamlessly enhancing scene transition and special uh, effect. So, in summary, Coda lights are an essential tool in the theater lighting design used to illuminate backdrops and cyclorama evenly. They enhance the visual impact of production by creating uniform washes of lights, uh, adding color and enable uh, scenic effect. When I show, uh, I say washing light, I remind you that is the light that share the uh, the light to a big distance. It's not a spotlight. It it is a wash light. Okay, whether using traditional incandescent or modern LED technology, the lights play a crucial role in settings, the mood, enhancing depth and supporting the overall aesthetic of the uh, stage uh, design. Now, we have, sorry, types of coda lights. Indeed, we have several types of coda lights. We have at first the traditional coda lights. These use incandescent or halogen lamps with reflectors. I hope that you remember all the detailed analysis I we made together about the reflectors in the uh, spotlights, profiles, pieces, and everything. Uh, also, the coda lights. Uh, all technology have reflectors and lenses to direct the lights. So we have the lenses, we have the lamp and the reflector. They often require gel in front of them to change the color. Modern color lights often use, of course, LED lamps, which often offer advantages such as lower power consumption, less heat generation, and the ability to change color digitally without gels and many colors. Because if we have, as uh, the contemporary uh, Coda Lights has uh, five colors, what it means RGB, uh, red, green, and blue, 
white and amber. So we can change and make almost all the colors. Uh, like other states light, coda lights are controlled via, uh, via lighting control board, which can adjust the intensity, dimming of course, and in the case of LED, the color of the light. As I mentioned, the position of coda, co, uh, coda lights is crucial, and that's why I said it again and again. They are typically aimed to cover the entire high and width of the cyclorama or backdrop, whatever, ensuring an even light distribution. Now, if we want to mention some other accessories for coda lights, we can say that there is a barn doors. I hope you remember what is the barn door. We, uh, it is an, uh, a, a tool we, um, we mention in the PCs. It is doors which close up and down, left and right, in order to make more spot the uh, the light beam from a PC, a PC projector. Also, we can uh, use Zell and filters. In traditional coda lights, of course, color uh, Zells can be used to change the color of the light. And I say once more, in LED coda lights, digital controls adjust the, uh, the color of the lights. Now, I, another branch of coda lights is the strip lights, also known as the border lights or cyclorama lights. Of course, it is a cyclorama lights, are a type of stage lighting fixtures commonly used in the theater to provide even illumination across large areas such as backdrops, cycloramas, and stage floors. What exactly is the strip lights? Sorry. Let's say something about the design and the construction. Strip lights are long, narrow lighting units that consist of a multiple lamps arranged in a row within a single housing. They can contain various types of lamps, including incandescent. It's not very used um, uh, very often, uh, uh, but LEDs, depending on the specific design and application. You can see uh, the both sides on the image that I have for you. The, uh, the above image, it is LEDs, and the other one, it is incandescent uh fluorescent uh lamps how many times we have traditional incandescent strip lights uh, you can see to the behind uh, uh image uh, which uh, use traditional incandescent bulbs and are less common today due to their higher energy consumption and heat output and it is dangerous because this kind of lights are positioned very near to cyclorama and the danger to have a fire there, it is big. LED strip lights, it is modern LED strip lights, are more energy efficient, produce less uh, heat, and offer greater flexibility in color mixing and control. They are increasingly popular in contemporary theater production, and it is not very, um, uh, very expensive. This is the uh, strip lights. Now, let's go to how strip light works. First, the illumination. Strip lights are designed to provide uniform, uh, uniform illumination across wide areas. Uh, 
They are often used to light backdrops or cyclorama, creating a smooth wash of lighting without hotspots or shadows to all the surface of the cyclorama. When equipped with multiple circuits, strip lights can mix colors by using different cells or LED colors, especially LED colors. For example, a three circuits strip lights might have red, green, and blue LEDs that can be mixed to produce a wide range of, co of colors, as I explained to you before. Also, the strip lights can be front lights or can be back lights, as I uh, told you before. Uh, there are also overhead lighting placed above the stage. They can provide down lighting for specific areas of or the entire stage. Also, strip lights are typically connected to dimming system that allow, you remember, dimmers and uh, um, splitters and the consoles that allows the lighting designer to adjust the, in the intensity of the light. In modern setups, especially with LED strip lights, lighting can be programmed to change color and intensity dynamically as part of the show uh, lighting cues. Um, now, the application we have in the theater. Um, um, as I told you, strip lights are commonly used to heavenly light of cyclorama. Uh, allowing for smooth color transition effect that can simulate different uh, times of the day or atmospheric condition. Second, the foot lighting uh, placed at the front edge of the stage, uh, like strip lights can provide foot lighting to illuminate performance from below, reducing shadows on their faces. Uh, border lighting mounted above the stage strip lights serve as a border light, providing a general illumination and enhancing the overall light design. Scenic lighting. They can be used to highlight scenic elements and create specific visual effect that contribute to the mood of the setting of the scene. For example, if we have a stage over the stage, a small stage, a, a sub uh, stage or praticabile as we used to uh, name it from the Italian name, praticabile, it's a small stage over the stage. And uh, we put a uh, strip lights all around this small stage, we have another uh, lighting effect there. The advantages, uniformity. Strip lights provide consistent and even lighting, which is essential for achieving smooth washes of color and avoiding harsh shadows. Versatility, of course, they can be used in various position and configuration, making them versatile tools for lighting designers. And last but not least, energy efficiency, especially with the advent of LED technology. Strip lights have become more energy efficient. Let's think about the climate change a little bit, reducing power consumption and heat output. In summary, strip lights are an essential component of theatrical lighting, providing versatile, even illumination for backdrops, for uh, cycloramas or in stage areas, or probably on a furniture that we, uh, that the stage designer put on the stage and uh, many other. Uh, We will pass now to another sector of the role of the uh, stage designing, the light plan. What is the light plan? So the light plan is a plan that uh, many uh, professions 
on uh, a performance, work with it. The stage designer, the costume designer, the light designer, of course, who create this light plan, the technicians of the lighting crew, and uh, the director of the performance, and everything. What is the light plan? It is uh, well, well, also known as a lighting plot or lighting design plan. Is a detailed diagram and documentation that outlines the placement, the type, and the usage of all lighting instrument in the theater production. It serves as a blueprint for the lighting designer and the technical crew to ensure the lighting design is executed accurately. Uh, Look at the image. This is, uh, there are all these small designs and symbols is used in a lighting plan and uh, the na named legends in the uh, language of the theater. So these small uh, symbols uh, provide to the technicians, to all the other uh, colleagues in the performance, provides many uh, information about the light. And we will um, uh, explain all of this. Well, a light plan, what is the shape? What is the form of the light plan? It is like that. And don't be afraid of this. We provide you two images. One is the light plan, and the other is another light plan, which shows where the lights from above the stage uh, uh, fall on the stage, on the floor stage, and what lights each one of them. So beforehand, we have to mention that, as you see to the images, that the Lighting plot diagram can have overhead view. This is the uh, the first image. Overhead view. This is a scaled drawing on the stage and auditorium many times from above, showing the exact position of all lighting instruments. As you understand from the previous lessons we have too many spotlights too different too many different spotlights okay i say it again parkans i have uh, pcs mm -hmm. profiles coda lights uh, led par leds uh, pc leds or moving hands you remember all this so in the lighting plan we put all these uh, marks, all these legends, as I told you, all these symbols, in order to know where each one of them is. Well, this symbol, the light marks named legends, as I told you, and each type of lighting instrument is represented by a specific symbol. Uh, the lighting instrument schedule, what is this? And what we will include in the schedule like this. In details, this is a spreadsheet, of course, uh, or list that provides detailed information about its lighting instrument, including instrument number. On the stage, this is one number. Type of light. It is this a spotlight, it is a fluid light, it is PC, it is a profile, it is what light is this? The wattage, wattage I mean how many watt is, is 500 watts, 1,000 um, uh, one, uh, uh, watts, uh, how, uh, how many watts is each one of them? The color, what gel we put, we put uh, red color, orange, amber, whatever to the analog, to the old um, uh, old fashioned projectors, because to the LEDs, the new technology, we can change the colors 
by diming in the with the console uh, digitally focus position area on the stage it illuminates so now i'm referring the other sim the the, the other image down of the screen uh, focus position what area of the state it illuminates each one of them also the channel number means in what channel in the dimmer went uh, goes this and the other projector the dimmer number and also the console number so we have when i handle and uh, turn the the 10 for example on my console i have shown you many consoles in the previous uh, uh lesson uh, meetings when i move it up and down probably the 42 spotlight uh, uh, works so we have all this connection uh, and wiring from the spotlight to the dimmer from the dimmer to the console i uh, we have mentioned all this now other characteristics how the light plan works design phase script analysis what we have to do as a light designer in order to use or to create a light plan which is very useful for the stage director for the uh, stage designer for the costume designer and especially for the technical electrician staff first of all we have to make to take the script from the production from the um, uh, stage director from the theater director the light designer reads the script i underline reads the script very carefully in order to understand the story the myth what the script what the theater text of Chekhov, of shakespeare of whatever speak about they have of the light designer must understand the mood and front moments that need special lighting so from the script and when we read it carefully we are working and we are uh function like an artist of course and we understand the story the mood and the front moment where we need special lighting when i say special lighting is probably there is a love scene on the left of the stage and suddenly a narrator appear to the right side of the stage so we have to send there a spotlight in order to uh to light him the same time to the love scene on the left we put it in the uh, blue light so we have this combination many of them we have to understand this the collaboration the designer collaborate the light designer collaborates with the director with the set designer with the costume designer to ensure the lighting plan supports the overall artistic vision of the performance because the overall artistic vision of the performance is a decision first of the director and after the after him the stage design the costume designer the light designer and all the others so we have all of us must united in this and we have to agree that this performance we will create we will uh, drive it, confront it to there, to be realistic, to be 
uh, expressionistic, to be surrealistic, whatever. And the light designer decides what the light must be in order to be realistic, naturalistic, and everything. The visualization, using tools like CAD, well, it's a little bit compl complicated. The CAD is mostly architectural software, but anyway, we can make this, uh, we can use it, uh, but I don't want to terrify you. Uh, it's not uh, necessary, and I will approve it in a while. The designer create a visual representation of the uh, lighting plot. As you can see, to this image I show you right now on the screen, it is from CAD uh, software. It is something from a software, from a computer, became. But it's not, I say again, it's not necessary. Uh, we have to make some uh, technical preparation now. This is very crucial. This is the main work of the lighting crew of the theater. First, according to this uh, plan, according to this uh, lighting plan, the technical crew uses the lighting plot to hang and focus the lighting according to the, speci to the specified position and angles. So uh, a technical crew can take this uh, plan and put all these symbols. Uh, uh, if you can see my cursor, oh no, sorry. If you can see my cursor, this is a Parkans. This is PCs. This is profiles. Okay, this is profiles also. So Parkans here. So uh, here is the code, uh, the, the code of lights. And here is the audience. Okay, now, if I am a technician and I can't take in my hands a plan like that, I can start to work, uh, uh, to, to, to go up on stage and to put here a PC, here a, a profile, a PC, a profile, and here Parkans, and here Coder Lights, and so on. Hand and focus. Focus means the beam. You remember that we have several, uh, not buttons, but uh, regulators on the PCs and on the profiles that we can change the lens position in the projector in order to make it more spotty or more wash. This is the focus. To make the color and the combos, if we have a profile, or PC to put a cell in front of this and make the color red or green. And the gobos, if we have profiles, to put a gobos inside the hole and to have shapes in if you if we want on the floor, for example, a tree means that we are in a garden. Uh, and finally, and uh, finally, wearing and testing. Uh, all these things, all these projectors must have a wire between to connect it with dimmers, to connect it with electricity, to connect it with console in order when I test this, uh, all this is on uh, is online and I can uh, turn on, turn off whatever I want to do with my instruments. Lights are connected so to the dimmers and control channels, and the system is tested to ensure everything war, uh, work as planned. And now here there is another light plan, which everybody can do that. This is uh, a, uh, a lighting plan, uh, by uh, by hands. So, programming and rehearsals. Here is the main work, and we are to the final uh, phase 
of the rehearsal and we are very near to the performance to the premiere okay let's uh let's be a little bit uh pay, pay attention to this first of all the q programming what is the q i mentioned to other thing that the q is the special second, the special point that I make a click on my console uh, when the text says, when the actor play there, and I click on my console in order to change the lighting. Uh, so when, for example, uh, Romeo say to Juliet that... Uh, I love you so much, I click on the button and I turn the light, uh, I, I change the light. This is the cue. So first of all, I made the cue programming. The lighting cues are programmed into a lighting control board with precise timing and transition. The contemporary consoles can make groups of lighting. So we programize all these cues and make all the combination of all the projector I, uh, I have on my stage. And also I programize what is the rhythm uh, to change the lighting from the, uh, from the previous to the next one. So it is fast, it is slow, we can programize it. This is the fade in and fade out. Fade in is the rhythm, uh, the speed, if you want, that a light, a cue, go in the stage, and fade out is when it leaves the stage, when depart the stage. So we have the same time fade in and fade out. Fade in for the next, fade out for the previous. And we have to make it together. When the previous light leaves, the same time the uh, next lighting, uh, the next cue came, came in. The tech rehearsal. The lighting designer attend the technical rehearsal to find tubes, the light, the lighting cues, and make adjustment based on the director's feedback and the actor's movement. Well, uh, okay, technical rehearsals are many. When I say many, in my theater, we made something about three, four technical rehearsals when we programize the cues, when we see all the lighting one after the other, when the directors see uh, the lighting without the actors, and then with the actors. Let's say about the performance, cue ex execution. During the performance, a lighting operator, a special man or women who stay there on the control and running the performance, follows the cue seats to execute the lighting changes accurately, enhancing the production's visual impact and supporting the storytelling, the performance, the text, the story of Romeo and Juliet or King Lear, whatever. Now, importance and benefits. Well, no. Let's make a parenthesis here. The man or the woman who run the, uh, the performance is on the control and have the console in front of him or her, is artist. He or she is like an actor. The way that he is on the console and click on the button and make the fade in and fade out, have emotions. It's not very simple. It, 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 it must have sensitivity. It's not a technical stuff. It's not 
like, okay, now the text is uh, here and I have to put the cue, clack, and uh, push the button. No, it's not like this. It needs sensitivity. Write it in your notes. So, importance and benefits. A well-documented light plan ensures that the lighting can be consistently reproduced for its performance. It allows for efficient setup, troubleshooting, and adjustment, saving time and resources. By clearly communicating the light design, it ensures that the artistic vision is faithfully executed. In summary, a light plan in the theater is an essential tool for organizing and implementing the lighting design. It includes detailed diagram, schedules and cue sheets that guide the technical crew and ensure the lighting enhance the overall uh, production. Now, you can see this image. The light designer here makes something by hand, but it is enough. That's why I told you before, don't terrify about this CAD software and all this. But a plan like this, and maybe two or three of this, is enough and it is necessary. The technical stuff, even it is blueprint, make by head, by head can work on it. Even it made by hand. If there is some mistake or need to make some corrections, we will see them on the field, on the stage, with the technical staff, with the director, and finally to the technical rehearsal with the actor and move it, movement. Uh, what is this technical rehearsal? What is this? It is a chaos. It is a chaos on stage. It is a chaos around the stage. The actors up and down and the costumes here and I don't have my hat and I don't have this and I don't have that and the light designer must make and organize this house of technical and human details. The actors, the director, the stage designer, the costume designer, this, that, technicians, and all this is, is a circus. And you have to organize it in something very specific and very uh, aesthetic where the audience, when it comes in the theater, nothing to understand about this, this house. The audience must enjoy the performance, must travel to other worlds, to go to England, to go to uh, Russia, to the Chekhov uh, universe, whatever. So, at the end, uh, I choose one video which is very good and useful, not because it will mention information that we didn't analyze, because in this time, we mentioned almost everything is necessary to know, uh, you to know, in an online workshop. We say everything the narrator says, but because the narrator, the narrator links Almost all we mention in one, the narrator. I, uh, uh, I I refer to the narrator of the of the video that you will see in a, in a second. The artistic role and contribution of the light designer. You will uh, see it right now. Hmm. Lighting design is about making choices. You hear? It is about. Yes. Arranging equipment in the performance space so that you are best prepared to create art that supports a performance. Let's start with one actor. We'll just point one light at her. There are a few things we can choose, even with just one white front light. The light can hit her face from a low angle or from a high one. 
Low angle lighting illuminates faces really well. It also overshoots upstage the performers into the space behind them. Steep angle lighting creates heavier shadows on faces and bodies. It creates tighter areas of lighting on the floor too. No matter whether it is a steep angle or a low angle, it can also come from the front or from a side angle. Light from the front is effective and thorough. It can flatten out features a little. Light that is from off center creates shadows on one side. This is good for sculpting, but it can create some visibility issues. This source direction favors audience on the actor's right. It might cause problems for people seated more stage left. Depending on where we can hang it, we might need to choose one type of instrument over another. Let's figure out how to create exactly the look shown here. There are lots of different types of lighting instruments. This instrument could create the desired look, but we can't hang it in empty space. This instrument has a more narrow field. Maybe it will help. Let's move it upwards. Okay. It looks like the cone of light that it creates is too narrow for our needs. This one, however, will do just what we want when we hang it on. On the grid. There is a grid over the stage. Different lighting instruments have different lenses, and they shoot light out in differently shaped cones. Now let's consider how this key looks from a seat over to the side of the playing space. If you're sitting over to one side, you can see her, but she's kind of shadowy. This isn't necessarily bad. The shadows flatter the shape of her face and form. But if she turns this way, her face will be dark. So let's add a second light to this and spread the two lights apart. This reduces the shadows, but it also reduces the sculpting. The light is no longer as dramatic. A strong choice to make at this point is to keep light coming from multiple directions, but use it to simulate light and shadow by using different colors. In this scene, we're using pink and blue. The pink is coming from stage left, and it creates the illusion of a light source. The blue is coming from stage right, and it creates the illusion of shadow without actually leaving half of her face dark. We establish a warm color to emulate the light source. We fill in from the other side using a cool color to emulate shadows. A steep angle backlight usually completes the composition when we do this arrangement. With our current setup, we can only generate one look unless we want to plunge part of the actor's face into darkness. If we light only one side or the other, we ignore audience to the left or the right of the actor. We can add versatility to this arrangement by adding more colors. We could have a second set of lights from the front with different colors. We can also add lights from other directions. With more lights to choose from, we can make different looks for different moments, settings, and time of day. By mixing colors from a single direction, we can create more colors like ambers and magentas. By surrounding the actors with light, we ensure that all of our audience can follow the storytelling no matter where they are sitting. So far, so good. However, this little arrangement of lights that we have so far will not let us light an entire stage. The lights that we use generally are good for filling an area from 6 feet up to about 12 feet wide. When they are shooting too far, the field becomes too wide. It becomes dimmer and less useful. We perform a little magic trick at this point in the process. We allow ourselves to take this entire system of lights and duplicate it into other areas. We break up the stage into circles. We mark the center of each and we copy our lighting plan consistently to surround each area. If we bring up groups of lights with the same color at once, it looks like a single source coming from one direction. We usually arrange these to conform to a specific set or performance space. By covering the entire space with areas, we can treat the entire stage like one big, consistent performance area. Here you see all of the top light for every area. By mixing the colors that we have available, we can create combinations of warm and cool.
sorry. You can see this window here. Behind here, there is a cyclorama, probably big, probably uh, uh, small and short, but there is, and probably there is a coda lights or strip lights there in order to have all this wash light here very seamlessly, very uh, um, uh, harmonically on the surface. The really important thing is to arrange the lights consistently so that the same colors hit each area from the same direction. In this design, no matter where you go on stage, the cyan is coming from downstage left. If this actor goes anywhere on stage with these specific lights up, her shadow will always point in the same direction. Here's the same effect using the red top lights instead. Notice the consistency of the shadows. A group of lights that can work together from one direction like this is called a wash. Wash. Washes are combined to make new colors and new looks. They're a building block for cues. Units within a wash can be brought up in smaller groups or individually. They do not have to all come up at once. We're going to keep this simple for this demo though. Not every instrument in a design is part of a wash. This window gobo at center stage is the only one of this these is the in this window gobo. design. And here's a little spotlight on these shutters up center. And here's some light for the stairs upright through that archway. These are important lights that are separate from the regular washes. These lights are called specials. Specials. All of these design choices are planned out. The beginning of the design might look like this. We're going to need something with a lot more information and accuracy though. Most of our lights are going to be hung on pipes up above the stage. Some theaters have battens called electrics, others have a grid. We need to create a light plot that shows every light that needs to be hung. The light plot is a drawing that emphasizes all of the places in a theater venue where lighting instruments can be hung. The acting areas are important, though they are not always shown on the final plot. We locate the instruments for one area, the same as we did earlier in our planning. It's important to consider the distance and the angle to the actor's face for each instrument placed. The angle of incident to the actor's face is a part of the design. Also, the throw distance will strongly influence the type of light that is used. Determine reasonable positions to place lighting instruments. Assign them to the pipe nearest their ideal position. Do this for the first area then imitate these positions for all of the other areas. What you end up with is a drawing that shows all of your lighting instruments with notes. The notes might tell us what color is in the instrument, where it is focused, or how it is hung. Look the how many information have each Keep one of these symbols. The can be complicated. In a lighting design, instruments are assigned special numbers called channels. Channels are channels. patched into the lighting console. They're what the computer uses to control the instruments. A good design has a system of channels that's easy to remember. Writing cues should be casual and fun. It should not require the designer to constantly look up numbers. The end goal for all this process is really simple. There will come a time when the line designer is creating visual art to support the show. A good design will provide lots of great options for any cue. By having lots of good choices available, it's easy to work with directors, choreographers, producers, and other designers. Like any other kind of art, it's always done best when it's done from a mindset of rest and fun. Having a great light plot hung and focused in the venue is the best start. Having relaxed, easy control of it is the next step. After that, it's all collaboration and art. Right. After that, it's all collaboration and art. Well, this was the video and I choose it for you. Uh, because it uh, connected very well the artistic part and the technical part of a light designer and light designing. Well, uh, is there any comments or uh, questions? about this because
It is uh, okay. Is there any comments or questions that uh, uh, you have? I have. Yes, Nata. Do you hear me? Uh, I don't don't understand how we can fix the focus position. Uh, what position on then? Our plan. Focus position on our plan. Yeah. Well, the light designer, when a director or a producer uh, call him and uh, uh, arrange with him that he will be uh, the light designer of uh, this performance, for example, the first thing that uh, uh, he has to understand and he has to learn is what is the stage if he didn't know before so he will go to the stage and and sit there for some moments the second question to the producer to the director is uh, what we have in our hands what do you have here how many uh projectors how many spotlights how many this how many that um, well, I have uh, 10 uh, spotlights uh, profile and another 10 uh, PCs and parkans and this and that and everything. Okay. And then he take the plot, the, the text by Shakespeare, by Chekhov, by whatever. And uh, he will have in his, in his mind that he has to work with uh, 30 projectors like this, like that, automation, LED, not LED, um, uh, old technology, new technology, whatever. And uh, he has to uh, make uh, light designing for Shakespeare, for Chekhov, for, for everything. Well, then he put on the paper uh, by hand or by software, uh, this because of that, this because of that, that because we have here a, a love scene and uh, we will put a little bit uh, rosy, a little bit red, or a little bit. Here we have a night, we will put a little bit blue, well, cold colors anyway. And here we have a narrator, who, uh, so I need the spotlight here. And all these instruments, I have them. If I don't have them, and uh, I, it is necessary to have, we rent them. Well, th this is the custom in Greece. I don't know what's happening to the other. Of course, if you are in a national theater, uh, they have everything. No problem. But if you are in a black box, a small group with very limited budget, with very limited instruments and uh, equipments. So you have to uh, to help them to make a good performance with this less uh, in, uh, equipment they have. Uh, uh, so. In Greece, if we need something very necessary, we rent it. And we put it there and we use it, especially for this performance. And we pay it, of course. And we made the, the, the lighting plan. And we say, here, I want uh, a spotlight profile. And here, I want another one, a PC, a parkan, and this and that. So if it's mistake, if it's not good, he will see it on, on, on the field. He will see it on stage, practice, in the rehearsal. So the director will say, no, I don't like this. Put another kind of projector, put another kind of zell in front, other color. Uh, make it more spotty, uh, make it more wash, uh, do this, do that. And they collaborate uh, together in order to achieve the final result that all together we want. So on the lighting plan, he put 
randomly, more or less, this projector or the other projector. And after that, on practice, probably he has to change some things. It's not something for one day. Even you have one projector only, it's not a work for one day. You have to inspire, you have to imagine, you have to read, you have to make a research. Research in the internet nowadays. Other days, uh, before, to the magazines, to newspapers, to other photos, uh, printed programs of the theaters where there are images of, uh, of from big directors, uh, directors that made the same uh, play that you have to do right now. And you get experience from this. You give a push to your imagination. Imagination is not is nothing it, it, it isn't something magic. It wants a push. It it wants a uh, uh, a stimuli. Huh? Uh, it wants a stimuli in order to start and to create things, to imagine, to implement on the paper or. Uh, on the stage. Well, this is my explanation. Uh, do I cover you? Yeah, okay. Yes. Anybody else, guys? We are very few today. What is Hello. happening? Huh? Hello? Why we are so few today? Hello? Hello, Ismail, are you... Are you talking? Yes. Okay. Tell yes. me. I want. I want to ask something. Yes. Are we Are we going to be able to uh, have a chance? And you know, we put in practice what we've just learned. Well, it, uh, it is some uh, interaction interaction deeper, and uh, I didn't understand you because we have something. The, the network, your network, my network, I don't know. It's not uh, very good. Tell, it, tell it again okay. clearly, speak clearly. Let me come again. What we've just learned. Are we what? going to, what we've just learned. Yeah. Are we going to have a chance to put in practice? Because we, this side, we do not have, like, most of those lights I've seen. Yeah. Well, these online uh, workshops cannot provide you practice. You have to find probably a small theater in your country. Where are you from? Uganda. Uganda, okay. And uh, to find somewhere uh, other people make theater, make rehearsals, make performances, national theater, not national theater, help them and involve with them in order to get experience. We will make uh, all what we have to do in order to give you experience. But it is online. I cannot do anything uh, with my screen in front of me. But uh, to the next lessons, we will speak about forms, and we will. Uh, I, I I will give you some uh, exercises in order to make uh, research, and to put on a light plot, a light plan, your imaginary spotlight, uh, and uh, the thing that I have to give you, it will be a short theater play. You will read it, and you will imagine the uh, the mood, the atmosphere of the of this play, and you uh, uh, propose a lighting in order to achieve the atmosphere. It's gonna be a house, the interior of a house. 
It's going to be a love scene. It's going to be a classical play. We will see. We will make the, re the, the research and you will put some spotlights uh, on a theater that I will give you. It will be uh, Italian stage or um, uh, frontal stage, you know, uh, the stage that the audience sit in front of the stage and see, not uh, uh, a round, uh, round stage or a proscenium or wh whatever. Uh, and uh, that's all we can do uh, with the distance we are. If we made us a workshop in Athens, for example, we will be in the theater and we will uh, see the real thing. Spotlights, parkans, all the instruments, the consoles, the dimmers, the cable and everything. And everybody who wants it to work with us to the next production can be in the theater for a while in order to get experience on the real time on real situations. That's what I have to answer to you, to your question. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome, Ismail. Anyway, Dian, how are you? Hello, I'm fine, Mr. Nikos. Okay, you. you're welcome. So do you have anything to to say? Because step by step, we uh, we approach the end of the uh, knowledge you can get from me and uh, by online uh, workshops. I don't have questions so far because you answered uh, them, them along the way, answering those questions. So, so far, uh, anything, nothing for me. Well... After uh, after a while and uh, with uh, after a discussion with the developer of our site, spectacular site, the project site, you will have all this presentation of all the subjects: uh, costume design, stage design, uh, light design, and makeup design uh, on uh, online, uh, in order to see one by one the screens that you see right now. Also, you will have in YouTube all the recording in order. Uh, to to see again and again how many times you want in order to remember uh, what we mentioned because we mentioned very fast in one hour we say too many things too many information and uh, of course it is naturally you cannot remember everything of that but uh, if you work uh, in the industry, if you work uh, in a theater, you can, and if you have to do something uh, like designing, you can go again and again to the specific point of our workshop in order to see what we say. And of course, there is internet. And in internet, there is everything. You can see tutorials uh, in YouTube, in Vimeo, here, there. Too many things in order to get knowledge that uh, uh, you don't have uh, uh, so far. And of course, the real knowledge is the experience. If you work again and again in a theater, you will uh, learn too many things. Information, information, information. And of course, reading. Reading. Uh, as I told you, the... Uh, uh, the work of light designer is an artistic work. So you have to go to a gallery, you have to go to a museum, you have to, uh, to, 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 to take a photo from a paintings, uh, to, to read theater plays, uh, to read uh, uh, about what the big directors uh, of the whole planet uh, made before in order to get experience to have uh, too many images in your imagination in order to make good things. Andrea. Yes. Do you have do you have anything to to mention? No, because I'm I'm uh, learning to to wait to have the opportunity to 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 use those things right now, I don't have the opportunity. But uh, something that I thought very important that you say that uh, 
our knowledge needs to be stimulated. When we have something to do, really, you discover your own uh, way to do things. And I, I know this because when I have stimulation, I can create really beautiful things. And that's... Okay. Yes, that's right. So if uh, we don't uh, um, have anything else to say, um, I will say bye-bye to you. Uh, probably next lesson, uh, we will not do that because I will be uh, on an airplane going from, uh, uh, from Rwanda to Athens and from Athens to Brussels. And uh, uh, it is absolutely... Uh, next Thursday. Uh, so I don't think that I will be able to make, even I am prepared, I, I don't think that uh, I will be in a good condition in order to, to make the lesson. So we will lose the other. But I will send you a um, uh, small uh, one-act play to read it and uh, to start to working a little bit. Uh, well, my experience say, and it is a little bit sad, that uh, when I have a class and uh, say and speak and speak and speak and make a lecture, something like this, everybody is there. When I put an exercise and I ask something from them, they started to not to be present. <laughs> and they uh, they are not follow the, the classes. So I say beforehand, don't afraid. Let's speak about this job. And uh, let's say what uh, uh, we... Uh, uh, everything that became from your work now, now. So I will send you some preferences, a plot, uh, a theater text, one act, not too big, not too too many things to ask to ask from you, and uh, a specific theater. Maybe some in, some uh, 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 equipments that you have uh, 30 uh, projectors which is three leds well, maybe like this or maybe not not to be to to make it uh, very complicated and uh, you read it and we will make a small research and some uh uh, and, uh, and the proposal from you that I will light this scene like this and like that. Don't afraid that you will make uh, mistakes. There is no mistake. It is thoughts and we will speak and we will discuss everything. Um, well, usually I I speak and I refer to the people that uh, want to uh, to have an image to, to to show me their faces, but there is many uh, some others. Your race, for example, I never saw you. How are you? And Nelida Rodriguez also. How are you? Where are you from? Ah, Capo Verde. Okay, I can see that. But I never saw your face. And uh, Amizero Bash, Bash or Pierre. Pierre, how are you? Not a picture, not a voice, nothing. Okay, if you don't want, no problem. But uh, ah yes, I have to clarify that uh, this uh, workshop can give you um, a certification after, especially the people that uh, uh, follow more or less all the workshops, all the all the uh, the meetings. And especially the people, uh, the the participants that 
uh, I have feedback from them. Uh, so if you want something like this, if the, something like this is attractive for you, participate better. Everything is clear. Ismail, you want to say something? Yes. Are you still going to send us the presentation you've done today? The today presentation? Yeah, we need to get it also. Well, immediately after I finish the, uh, uh, the meeting with you, I uh, upload it to the YouTube. And uh, I send it to everybody who asks. So it's there are needed. all there on YouTube. Okay. Yes. So yes, if if somebody writes an email to me and ask about the link, I send it. Okay, thank you so much. Because I need to review it, I need to go through yes. it again. That's right, Ismail. And if you want uh, to ask me something out of the meetings, don't hesitate to ask. Write a, an, email. an email with your question and I will uh, answer to you as soon as possible. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Could you please uh, repeat your email? My mail? But yes. uh, I, I have sent you the email to the uh, reminder to okay, everyone. Yeah, yeah. That was by Euro Project. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's right. EU Project. Yes. That's right. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Yes, Andrea. I was thinking if it's not good to have a WhatsApp group with all the, the people that we can communicate because in email we don't see each other here. I just see two faces sometimes. Maybe people start talking there, <laughs> share experience. Yes. Well, how can we meet? How can we have a, a meeting all together? What do you mean all together? And states what's designers? WhatsApp group? WhatsApp group when people say I'm not coming today or ask something, talk. Let, uh, let Andrea put up the... The, well, the, the email group. Yeah, from the mobile, probably, yes. Uh, well, uh, well, it's not a bad idea, but now we are to the uh, final phase of the workshop. If you uh, thought and proposed this to the beginning, probably we can do that, yeah. But now we have to work. Maybe we can share experience, I don't know. Yes, probably, yes. Do I have your, your mobile phone? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay, if I have, probably we can do that, yes. Yeah. Yes, we, I think we need to put up a WhatsApp group for further consultation in case you get a problem, you need someone to, you know, yeah. inquire from. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely need Yes, probably. Group. Well, I cannot... Uh... I cannot trust very well all these media, well, uh, WhatsApp and Viper, because many times I lose things. Not in email. Email is there, and uh, every time that, 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 that I want it, um, I can find it. And what do you ask before uh, three weeks? I can find it in, in email, because they are. If it is uh, WhatsApp, Oh, there, there is too many other things after you asking this and that. But anyway, if you want, yes, we can do that. Also, the mobility of the uh, of the group is uh, uh, is very big. We started about forty. Uh, we um, uh, till the last uh, lesson we were uh, about twenty five. I, I don't remember. Today we uh, we were eleven. What can we do? What is happening with the uh, WhatsApp if uh, we have a mobility like this? Anyway, uh, whatever, I will think about that, Andrea. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, bye-bye, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.